Well, hello, hello. How is everyone doing this evening? <laughs> I am Eve with the baby's booty and we are coming to you live and in color. So if you have any questions you would like to ask this evening, especially in regards to pricing your embroidery, we had a really awesome question about that in the hoop group recently and so i figured why not go ahead and tackle that subject so we all can benefit from not getting overburdened not underpricing or undervaluing ourselves so that's what our topic is going to be tonight um pricing is something that's a bit of a sensitive subject and a lot of folks just cannot figure the right way to price so we're gonna dive right into that and see if we can't uh, get some experience in it. We have some long-term experience that's going to be in here with that. I also have a price list from a standalone embroidery location. So we're going to dive right into that as soon as we say hello to everyone. First and foremost, um, I want to welcome you all. I mean, this website down here, thebabiesbooty.com is our website. We do have a forum there, the hoop group that you can uh, join for free if you would like to. We also have a Facebook group, so you can go on Facebook and type in Hoop Group or The Baby's Booty and it should pull up and you can join us there as well. We welcome each and every one of you just as long as you're respectful and we're discussing any of the crafts that we all involve ourselves in and spend so much money on. Uh, but to get hits and tips and tricks and all that cool stuff, all of that is going to be in the Facebook group and the Hoop Group on our website. Um, I also want to point out that here on YouTube, we also have a membership here, all right? Anytime you join as a member, uh, not only do we ring the bell for you, but we also will send you your own bell. A lot of people keep asking, how do I get a bell? Well, the way to get the bell is to join the YouTube membership, which is here on this website. So it's a monthly fee. We have three different levels. Uh, even the lowest level, you are able to get a bell that will be sent to you. So we have bells. The bells are ready to go. I just got to put labels on them and get them out to you. And then once you join, just shoot me an email at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com and say, hey, I'm a member. This is my YouTube name and we'll and this is my address and we'll get the bell right out to you. If you want one, you don't have to have one, but if you want one, Feel free to join up and we look forward to your support and thank you in advance for your support. Speaking of that, we would not have this channel were it not for you. So without any further ado, one of the first things that I do when we come on live is say hello to the folks who have taken the time out of their busy schedule to join us live. And we're going to start off with Afro-Columbian78 and say, hey, what up, girl? How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome. Then we also have Miss Sheila Cushenberry. Hi, Sheila Cushenberry. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Cheryl Melton. Hello. How are you? Uh, Inspiration Creations from Canada. Hi. How are you? Uh, Leela Nelson and Tanyu are both YouTube Hoop Group members. And I want to say thank you to the both of you. Thank you for being YouTube Hoop Group members and welcome. We have Stitching Hearts. Hey, Stitching Hearts. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics is here with us as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, Girl Biz CJ, hello. How are you? Welcome. Rebecca Ricketts, hello. How are you? Alyssa Layman, let's start off with a bell ring. Holler, that's what's up. She says she got a new industrial serger for the sewing side of her business. She say, woohoo. So congratulations, Alyssa, on your new serger. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. We like surges around here too. Now they're a little bit tougher to deal with, but we do like surges. So congratulations to you on that. Um, let's see. Scooby-Doo is in the house. Welcome, Scooby-Doo. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I really appreciate it. Sonny O'Neill, good evening to you as well. Eddie Jr. Hey, Eddie Jr. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Suzanne Gold, Grand Gold from Florida at the Space Coast. Thank you, my love, for joining us and welcome as always. We also have Heather Shimke. Hello from Australia. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I probably butchered it before, but I want to say welcome again. Sandy Fincham. 
Good evening to you, Isabel Morgan. Hello, how are you? Miss Dorothy Gaston is here from the STL. Welcome. Thank you for joining us as always. Jackie Maddox from Maryland. Welcome. Uh, Tree C. Hey, Tree C. How are you, my dear? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Andrea Ross. Good sad Sunday evening to you as well from Maryland. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Mary Stovall, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. And welcome. Thank you for joining us. Debbie D. Hi, Debbie D. Welcome. <laughs> thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We have Nanette Squashish, I believe. Hello. How are you? Welcome. I apologize if I butchered it. I really apologize. Nina Walt, good evening to you as well. Miss Pearl Lucas, hello, my dear. How are you? Dextra Wilson, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate you being here and thank you. Good evening to you as well. Miss 143, hello. How are you? Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. And I am feeling a lot better. No headache tonight. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Still not up to 100%, but a heck of a lot better than I was. So we're going to count that as a plus. Suzanne R., hello. She says, howdy, everyone from College Station, Texas. Welcome. And uh, let's see, Iris Diaz, good evening to you as well. Thank you. It is. Knickknack Nurse, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Avro Columbian. I thought so as well. Jessica Padilla, hello, hello, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us this evening. Andy Alvarado, thank you as well for joining us. Cynthia Downer, hi, how are you? Welcome. Carmen Alvarado says, hi from Cali, so glad to be here with all of you and learning. Pricing is a great subject. I agree, that's a tough subject for a lot of folks. So we're gonna tackle that. Y'all, y'all gonna have me doing math tonight. Y'all gonna have me doing math. Y'all know how I am with math, but I said, we gotta do it for the hoop group. We gonna get this math, and I'm gonna do this math. Now, I'm gonna use the calculator on my phone. Don't get it twisted. We ain't doing all that, but we gonna do some math. Cause we gonna figure this uh, embroidery pricing out and make sense of it. I want you guys, that's my biggest thing. I want it to make sense to you why you would charge as much as you charge for doing embroidery, right? So we're going to break that all the way down today. Karen Walker. Hey, Karen Walker from Pittsburgh. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Shonda Coleman from Arkansas. Welcome. She says, I definitely need to learn how to price items. Well, that's what we're going to do, girl. We're going to get it together. Margie, affordable photo shoot. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We like affordable photo shoots around here. So welcome. <laughs> Flora Dixon from Tulsa. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, Marsha Jones. Hello, how are you? Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Iris Diaz, I just lost it just that quick. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Iris Diaz, how is everyone in baby's booty land? Everyone is good, you guys. I finished building a porch swing yesterday with my husband's help, with uh, my daughter's help, and my daughter-in-law's help. And I told them that their hours of swing is wide open. They can swing anytime they want to. Everyone else has limited swing hours. So that's what's been going on around here lately. We did work on that and get it done. Super excited. In betwixt and in between laying around, that's what I was able to get done this week. Not very much embroidery. Well, no, I'm lying. I did get a large order done of bags when I finally felt good enough to get in front of the machine, which was yesterday or day before. Um, so I've done a little bit of stitching, but mostly just piddling around the house. Shirley Stewart, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I am doing okay. Miss Social Deb as well from Illinois. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Stampin' Sue Creates, hello, how are you? She says, from Northeastern Pennsylvania. Hugs to you and hugs right back. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ray Fallow, hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Miss Ethel Smith is in the house. Good evening to you as well. And thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Karen Murray from Canada, welcome. And thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Lachelle Moore, Beverly Smith, Joe McBride from Mississippi, and B Mays 5. Hello to all of you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Veronica Morgan, good evening to you as well. Marsha Jones, did I say good evening to you? And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I don't remember, but thank you. 
Mary Brown says, hello, even everyone from Memphis got my new EMT 16L 16X Melco this week. So excited. Congratulations, Mary Brown. That is a big baby and a lot of needles. We're going to ring the bell for you. Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> Hi. I was told to ring the bell back far. Congratulations. Because <laughs> when it's up close, it's too loud. So I apologize for the ears that are ruptured in the pads. Uh, Reba Moore, hello. Love the videos. New to So What Pro. You have helped me a lot. Thank you, Reba Moore. Speaking of which, y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, the So What Pro classes are filling super fast. Three have sold out already. We do have three more classes with some room in it. So if you're interested in learning to master So What Pro, it's a quick class. We're going to make it really quick and we're going to hit all the hard spots and get you really, really comfortable using So What Pro. And that's coming up. Um, not, I think the classes that are not full are not the ones for next week, but the week after. No, 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 not the week after, the week after that. Because the week after that is our anniversary. So I'm not going to have classes that week. But... There are classes coming up. So if you're interested in getting in with Sewa Pro and learning the all the ins and outs and whatnot, here's the link. So what pro class registration is you see right down here, thebabiesbooty.com slash events dash one. Just go there or you can go to thebabiesbooty.com. And then if you click um, at the top where it says home, I believe I'll have to take a look and see. Um, but if you click that, the events tab is right up under it. So let's take a look and I'll tell you exactly what's on the page. You can click on home. If you click on the home tab, it'll drop down and one says freebies and the other one up under it says events. So that's where you can go to find the classes as well. So definitely join us. We got room, but the room is running out quickly. Doreen Rachels, hey, how are you from Holland, Ohio? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Yvette, hey, from Pennsylvania. Welcome. Andy says, I am new, but I saw one of your videos and it was simple to understand. Well, thank you. That's our aim. We don't want to make it complicated. Embroidery is not super complicated. It, it's actually quite simple as long as you understand the foundations for it. So that's what we're going to tackle this evening Let's see, Linda McKinney. Hi there from Memphis. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, Heather. Thank you. I appreciate the confirmation. <laughs> um, Marge Campbell, PJ Coppin. Hey, PJ. Eddie Jr. saying hey. And let's see, Jen Damar Parsons. Welcome. Janice from Atlanta. Welcome, Janice from Atlanta. We appreciate you being here with us. Um, let's see, Willa Allen, I saw in here. Oh, Karen Walker is new to the Hoop Group. Congratulations! Welcome! <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Come on, Bell, cooperate. So be sure, Karen, if you want your purple bell, pretty purple bell, email me. Say, hey, this is Karen Walker. I joined up tonight, and this is my mailing address. So I can get your bell right out to you. Thank you for joining us, girl. We appreciate that love. Hi, That's what's up. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, let's see. Linda McKinney says, hi there from Memphis. I think I said that already. I'm just trying to go back to where I was. Let's see. Jandamar Parsons, I did. Willa Allen, that's what it was. Good evening. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Much, much better. Not quite as bad. TLS, a tour? Stitch away here for the first time. I need this topic badly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's definitely what we're going to touch. Deborah Chandler from Arizona. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Teresa Spencer, Sierra Martin, Marge Campbell, Lisa Adams from North Carolina. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Miss Bickham. Hi, Mo. How you doing? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Love it. Love it. Walk by Faith and Charlene Mitchell in Oklahoma. Welcome. Amanda, Amanda, welcome. Teresa Spencer from Vegas. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Dawn Fournier, howdy, from Tejas. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Nancy Faust, Eartha Lewis, Marge Campbell is in Littlefield, Texas. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so very, very much for joining us this evening on this hot topic. Hot topic, hot topic, y'all. So when we get to doing um, embroidery and we're trying to price our embroidery, 
how many of you guys in here this evening is really looking to benefit from selling your embroidery? Now, I know there's a lot of folks who want to do um, just embroidery for fun. So if you're doing for fun, type fun. If you're doing for uh, business and you want to know pricing and how to sell, type money. All right. So let us know which one. Fun or money? Fun or money? Let me know which one. <laughs> and Sora, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Living free from California. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Katrina from Alabama. Welcome. Maria Arnica from Miami. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. That's Phenomenal Creations. Hey, love. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome, Tanya Adams. Thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome, South Karen. Thank you so much again. I really, really appreciate it. All right. So we got sale, money, money. I need them coins. I love it. <laughs> money, 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 money. Wow. Walk by faith, money and fun. Marge, both. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So the money is not funny we can get this we can do this all right so you can do this you can make money you can earn a profit and i'm telling you this this is not just big machines okay we're not talking about just multi-needle machines that can make money i promise you that four by four embroidery machine is how i started it is possible you just have to open your mind and say this is what i have we're going to make this work and we're going to make money off of it. You can do it. It is not impossible. Okay, so we're going to go over your basic though. Because the thing is, just because you got the machine and you know a little bit about embroidery or you know embroidery and know how to do it doesn't mean that you're automatically going to price it properly. Okay, so we're going to definitely dive into that. Laverne Miller, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us and you're welcome for your Sewet Pro program. <laughs> Dawn says she wants to retire and earn some money. That's what's up. Margo, welcome from Washington State. Everyone is doing good. Nick Nick Nurse say money, 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 money. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Dolores from Charlotte. Welcome, neighbor. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening, Dolores. Olivia says, looks like for both. All right. We're definitely going to get this started. So one of the first things I want to point out is I was able to procure a price list from a local embroidery industrial brick and mortar. Okay. Brick and mortar, meaning they have a building that any customer can go to and order embroidery services. Right. So most of you guys uh, are doing the embroidery from your home. You either sell on Etsy or you may sell on your website or you may sell on Facebook or you may not be selling on any of those uh, platforms. You just sell in face to face or word of mouth. Either way is good. OK, now, if you are only word of mouth and you're at home and you just honestly, in my opinion, word of mouth has proven to be the best way to get business over well over the uh, social media and Instagrams and websites all over that. Now, unless you hit on something super hot and you're the only one doing it, like for instance, at the beginning of the year, when I was telling you guys, hey, look, this face mask thing is huge. There's several ways to do it. Go ahead and jump on this bandwagon because face masks are hard to come by. Go ahead and get it. For those of you that jumped on that bandwagon and priced out and actually ordered and made fate or made your own face mask. I've gotten proof after proof after proof that they did very, very well with it. I know I did for a short, not a short period of time, but for a period of time, all I was eating, sleeping and breathing face masks. Even now I have one very good customer and she um, orders custom masks that I sublimate and she sells those. So it's there. The money was there. Now, everybody and their grandma is making face masks <laughs> or everybody and their grandma is sublimating face masks. It's hard to, you know, kind of like be exclusive and pull in that money. Now, there are still some folks that are still making money, but it's not as hard, not hard, but it's not as plentiful as it was before. And that's OK. But keep in mind, this is the end of September. So we have 
October and then soon you got two of the busiest shopping months of the season. Now, granted, it's going to be a little more tame, so to speak, because of the coronavirus and people, you know, but the mail order part of it actually might ramp up and prove to be beneficial for you. The reason why I'm bringing that up is this is a brick and mortar price list. But if you're at home, you don't have to worry about this overhead. So this price list might be a little pricey for some of you. And that's OK, because you can adjust your prices to make sure that you make a profit. That's top bottom line. The only line is profit. If you're not making a profit, then it's not beneficial to if it's not making coins, then it's not going to make sense. OK, so we, we need to make sense off of this. OK, so if you don't have the brick and mortar, you might not have to have such high prices, but you will most likely have to involve some form of shipping nowadays because you don't want all these strange people coming to your house. So you do need to add in for shipping. So we're I'm only bringing that up because that's going to come into play once we start talking these prices. And we're also going to go into pricing just the embroidery by itself okay so before i dive into the actual hardcore prices let's talk about our embroidery machines for a moment all right so hello hillier health how are you welcome welcome she says money <laughs> Lila says she's still someone mask that's what's up dorothy gaston yes have and still do awesome saws and stampin sue is still doing masks that's what's up because that's you know that was hot that was super, super hot. Some folks still are. Like I said, I'm doing a little bit. Nowhere near the volume I had before. So when you're talking about your embroidery machine and making money off of your embroidery, one of the things to keep in mind is usually, usually folks will price their embroidery based on stitch count. Now, where would that not come into play? Stitch count won't come into play. Well, stitch count probably won't come into play with, say, for instance, face mask. If you're doing um, like I was, I'm embroidering face mask, but I'm also sublimating it as well. So I'm not basing that embroidery on stitch count because that's just one set of stitches. I'm not doing any extra embroidery. So because it's the exact same thing over and over and over and over, my price strategy is based off of just doing the sublimation and customizing the image on the mask. So in that instance, I'm not charging really very much at all for the embroidery. The price is in there, but not very much. Um, another instance may come in if you're doing like a specialty item such as jackets or hats or something like that. And the reason why I say you may not base the total price on stitch count is because now you're dealing with a specialty item, okay? So you actually have to take into account the cost of the hat as well. Um, then you also could base it off of how many pieces you're doing. I have a flat rate for my cheer team whenever I do their duffel bags. It's one flat rate, no more, no less. Some bags have one design on it. Some bags have two designs. It's okay. I don't go based on stitch count. I just go based off of price. I made that exception for them because they do so many bags a year and because I know they are marking it up somewhat to raise money for the team when they sell it to the kids with their customization on. So, and you share their price list. Um, whose price list? I, I will share this price list and then I have another commercial price list. But at the moment, we're just pretty much just talking in generalizations. And I'm going to have to see if I can't figure a way to put all of this broken down on the side of the screen. As a matter of fact, I think I know how to do it. But keep in mind, so going back to the machine, and I'm going to figure how to do this. We're going to add um, some information to our screen. So information, we're going to do this. And what I'm going to do is put over here something that a lot of people may not think about. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, when I use my 4x4 embroidery machine, the 4x4 
um, little home embroidery machine. That machine stitches at about 650 stitches per minute, okay? So keep that in mind, and I'm going to put that up on the screen if it's going to show. Where did it go? It went somewhere way out of the way. So let me go back to that and bring it back up. And go to, here we go. Man, that thing made it super big. So once we figure out our um, 650 stitches per minute, keep in mind that we charge usually a dollar per stitch. Okay, dollar per thousand stitches. So if you're talking about 650,000 stitches, then how can you charge a dollar per thousand stitches? Okay, so again, y'all got me doing math. So I'm going to pull out my trusty rusty calculator in addition to trying to figure out how to put this up on the screen. Okay, so 650 stitches per minute, but we're doing a thousand stitches. So let's double that 650. 650 times two to put us over a thousand. We're at 1,300 stitches. And if you're charging a dollar per thousand, so you can do a thousand stitches and your machine should be able to do that in two minutes. Okay? So you're making a dollar every two minutes with that machine, with your little home machine. So when you're looking at making two dollars per minute, so that's we're rounding up, if I'm remembering correctly. So two dollars for every two dollars, two dollars for every two minutes. Did I say that right? A dollar every two minutes. This is where I need my math person, my husband. All right, so a dollar every two minutes. Let's see, six fifty. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. Y'all know I don't do math, so you know I love y'all. Do you buy the duffel bags or do they they bring me the duffel bags? A dollar every two minutes that was right okay so if you're making a dollar every two minutes then you're making five dollars every ten minutes okay right Sonny we're gonna get to that so you're making five dollars every ten minutes off of whatever it is that you're doing so as Sonny was bringing out just because you're making five dollars every 10 minutes you have to look at the entire picture okay it's not just the time that's involved which is why we come up with the dollar per thousand okay so your dollar per thousand you have to take into account um your stabilizer because you have to use stabilizer for the most part when you're doing embroidery like with my duffel bags i don't use it but it's okay. You still have to keep into account your stabilizer. You have to take into account all your supplies that you may use. Your scissors, your pins, marking pins. Now the cool thing is with your scissors, your marking pins, your stabilizer, your spread adhesive, your hoops, uh, your machine. Um, what else do we have? Your thread. All of that is stuff that you can use for more than one job. So that's the good thing. You're not like having to, in some instances, I have found myself buying a spool of thread of a certain color for one customer. Okay, now that can get pricey if you end up having to do a dedicated spool per customer. But what I've learned is over time, as they order more and more because they love what they've received, then that price spreads out over time. Okay, so as Sunny brings out hooping time, stabilizer your needles, your um, expertise. Don't get it twisted. Your time is valuable because you know how to embroider, but these folks don't. That's why they're coming to you. Research time is huge. Oh my God. When they're asking for, okay, we want pink polo shirts. Well, I have to go out there and find pink polo shirts and I have to find a quality and the type that they will like and that will work with me and my equipment. Okay. So 
I charge the customer for the thread if I had to order it, Ms. Bickham says. And I considered that as well. However, the only reason I chose not to in most of my instances. Now, there was one instance where she wanted a certain metallic thread. Honey, no, we don't just pay out of pocket for metallic thread. But in most instances, I know nine times out of ten, I'm probably going to use it with another project. So I didn't charge that customer specific, but they have come back over. I have Heather is is right here. Child. I'm trying. <laughs> so I'm servicing the machine is another. What are some other expenses that you guys can think of that you should consider when you're looking at your pricing and why your price actually not when you for considering your prices, but why your prices are what they are. OK, so again, going back down, going down. Don't put it on the main display. I don't put mine up on display for my customers. But if you do have a display, yes, you can just say this is for that customer. Um, now, my one customer with that one color, that is usually just theirs. I don't really use that color for anybody else. But they order so much from me until it doesn't, doesn't bother me as much. Um, electricity, Andrea says. So going back, you you still have to bust it all the way down to your basics with the equipment primarily, though, because your 4x4 embroidery machine may do 650 stitches per minute. These larger multi-needle machines do 1,000 stitches per minute, okay? So if they're doing 1,000 stitches per minute, I'm making a dollar a minute as opposed to a dollar every two minutes with the 4x4 smaller machine. All right. Another huge difference with the larger machines. This is much more expensive equipment than the four by four machine. It takes much many more types of hoops. And usually if I have to do a job on this, that means it's too big for the smaller machine. So technically my prices should be a little more for this equipment than for the smaller equipment. Number one, the price is more. And number two, nine times out of 10, my stitch count is way higher than what the 4x4 can handle, all right? So, yes, your over, overhead, your digitizing fees, the embroidery files, buying or digitizing the files, digitizing again, difficulty of hooping the item, electricity, she said, and your labor. So all of those things we're going to get into, but your basics, you definitely need to consider, all right? So when we're saying a dollar per thousand stitches, that's why we're taking into account all of those other things that we have to pay, spreading them out over our jobs and then busting down what will bring the best profit. So a dollar per thousand stitches is why we generally say that price. But here is where oh, I made my mistakes in the beginning. I learned about the dollar per stitches and actually... I think these guys, is it these people? There was another, hold on. Was it, no, it was another company. They didn't charge a dollar per thousand. They charged a dollar fifty per thousand. So you can, that dollar per thousand is not a hard, fast rule. They did a dollar fifty. But keep in mind, the other company as well had a brick and mortar store that you could walk into. So they had to pay rent every month for a storefront. Whereas these guys, they have it based on their minimum. And we can do just the bare minimum of a dollar per, per thousand. However, where I made my mistake was I didn't charge a minimum in the beginning. So the dollar per thousand helps. That's a good that's a good basis to keep in mind, okay? She said, "Welcome Frankie. Hello Frankie. How are you? Thank you, Miss Bickham. Hello Frankie." <laughs> um the dollar per thousand is a good basis to start with, but you really should have a minimum order, okay? Why do you think I would say you should have a minimum order requirement? Okay? So for the new folks, cuz I this is this is the whole group. We're a group, right? So we're going to work this out together. We're going to talk about this together. Why should you have a minimum? Hi, Andrea. How are you? Set up fees. Set up fees and minimum kind of sort of the same thing. 
what do you consider the most you can do on a single needle before jumping into a 6 to 10 needle machine? Can we put a pin in that and come back to that, please? Because that's the same topic, kind of on a different level. We'll get to that once we break down our prices. So why would I say have a minimum? For those who may or may not know, it's really important. I didn't have a minimum. Oh my God, I did not have a minimum, y'all. It was tragic. It really was. So when you need to take orders and folks come and they're like, all I want is this one bag and all I want are these initials. Why? Why would you knick-knack nurse to make a profit, Andrea? Because some of your jobs don't have a lot of stitches like a name. You got to says small jobs still require customer time. Yes, it does. So usually what I have found too is when people say, I want my initials on this and that's it. One of the things that they generally want you to embroider is something that they brought themselves and they're trying to save money. And their thing is, I have this, it's just this little bit of embroidery. It can't be any more than $5 to put this on. No, 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 no. Because you're taking your time, Karen, exactly. You're taking your time to do this. You're using thread. You're using stabilizer. You're using your expertise. $5, you eat that up in stabilizer in time alone that doesn't include needles if you break a needle on something that they're bringing and god forbid you mess up on something that they brought to you that's something else we have to consider and we'll go into that as well because a small name or a logo can be under 10,000 stitches you lose money i have a ten dollar minimum Stampin' Sue creates my NQ 1600 is down now. I have to wait until the 17th until they can even look at it in another two weeks and just purchased it in February. That downtime, you having to pay to get it fixed. All the embroidery that you've done, the profit has to go to help with those expenditures. So you have to keep in mind when we're pricing this, keep a minimum. Keep your minimum. Have a minimum. I don't care if it's $8. I don't care if it's $10. I don't care if, like these folks right here, they have a $45 minimum, $45 minimum invoice, $45 bucks for their embroidery jobs. You're not walking in and walking out for less than $45 because it's a waste of their time to do those small itty bitty jobs that just could potentially cause problems. Replacing damaged items cost money, more money than is ridiculous. And speaking of which, I'm supposed to be posting a post in the group. I will be posting a post in the group showing how this stitch eraser saved my life to keep me from having to re repair something just this week. Yesterday, I think it was. Pretty sure it was yesterday because I was doing those bags. This thing. So keep in mind, you're buying one of these cost money so all of our supplies and stuff you have to take all of that into account so when a person comes to you listen to me please lord y'all listen to me listen to me linda L listen linda listen please don't let someone come to you in your business and your embroidery whatever it is that you're putting together and tell you that your prices are too high. Did you hear me? Don't let someone come and tell you that your prices are too high. They can come and tell you that. Ignore that. Don't let that affect your mood, your thought process, none of that. Because I guarantee you the same person that will come and tell you that your prices are too high is the same person that will walk into Coach, that will walk into Michael Kors, that will walk into, um, what's the name of that that my son wears? All the, Adidas, not Adidas, that wasn't what, Under Armour, 
all of these name brands and their prices are in some people's eyes that can't necessarily afford it are high but the same folk that come to you and saying oh you can't is that i'm can, do i have to pay it in? no because when you walk into those stores and you're buying what you're buying there it's not custom it's not custom embroidery what you guys are doing is custom custom embroidery they are coming to you because you can do what they want with stitches on something that they want do not let someone come in and break your spirit telling you that you're charging too much if you if they feel like you're charging too much oh for real i am so sorry you feel that way well i tell you what here's this other person down the street you can go down there and they'll probably be able to do that for you just at the maybe at the price you want i don't know but i'm sorry that i'm not sorry but that's my prices don't don't let them tell you any different don't let them tell you any different okay so definitely definitely keep that in mind okay so honestly a dollar per thousand is the minimum bare minimum and bare minimum 10 bucks minimum order is what i would suggest anyone charge now that's me and that's my area this is the other aspect of it this is me this is my area how many of you guys in here from california california's price strategy over yonder is way different new york how many of you guys in here are from new york we got a couple of folks that come in here regularly from brooklyn there's some folks um even from up north pennsylvania there's a couple of y'all said Pennsylvania, California, Seattle, Washington area, New York. All these places way more expensive than down here in the good old South. Okay. Way more pricey. Way, way, way more. So my price, my $10 minimum and my dollar per thousand up there, they probably run to me to get something done because I'm less expensive. But up there, you're going to play, pay a premium because the cost of living is higher. So you have to take that into consideration as well. So again, the minimum, a dollar per thousand stitches, the minimum order that you should take is $10 to even turn your machine on. Okay. So keep that in mind. That's something else. That's something. <laughs> Andy says, I'm a Marine. You can't break me. <laughs> hilarious i love it miss beckham i'm sorry that my prices aren't within your budget feel free to look around somewhere that fits your budget i'm just saying you have to keep that in mind okay so we got that bare minimum ten dollars and i'm i again need to go back to trying to put this on the screen bare minimum ten dollars bare minimum thousand stitches i mean a dollar per thousand stitches but fluctuate from that it's up to you fill out your area look at your area check out I mean, there's no harm going to a local brick and mortar embroidery store like I did. Find a price list, see what they charge. Be like, hmm, how do I compare with their prices? Do I charge this much? Blah, 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 blah. All right, so that's the bare minimum. And that's why look at your time frame difference. The larger equipment stitches faster, so you'll make money faster. The smaller equipment, you'll still make money, but look at it like 650 stitches a minute, so you'll make a dollar every two minutes for those machines okay roughly now one of the cost one of the questions that was brought up in the hoop group to uh, today yesterday was I have a customer coming to me wanting to have embroidery done and she's bringing the item how do I know how much to charge All right so the customer is coming to me she's bringing the item how do i know how much to charge all right that was the question now keep it in mind that Oh, that's why. Keeping in mind that you are 
trying to get this customer serviced. You're trying to, and she's on the phone, or she's in your inbox, or she's texting. How do you price that job? So I need you guys, and I just, I, I'm trying so hard to get this darn thing on here. Y'all know how I am with technology, so we're going to try and get this going. But when you are pricing an order, there are questions <laughs> that you really should be asking, okay? Very important questions that you should be asking. You should be asking, first of all, what item are you bringing? Okay. What item are you bringing? Let's see if I can't get this on there. Is that on there? Can y'all see that? That's one of the first questions. Why is that an important question? Before you start pricing. Marge, we, we about to get to that, but we got to we gotta figure out what she's bringing first. Because if she's bringing a, a flat, stiff brim ball cap and she wants her logo put on it and you just have the 4x4 embroidery machine, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That is a, a nearly impossible item to embroider on a 4x4 machine. Or, worst case yet, and I don't have it here. Do I have a picture of it? I think I have a picture of it. I got an order for a diaper bag. And I said, yes, I can do the diaper bag. All I'm doing is putting a name on the diaper bag. Sure, yeah, I can do the diaper bag. That's not an issue. Y'all, it was an issue. It was an issue. Let me see. Okay, here we go. I'm going to zoom in and show y'all. I wish I could put it up on the screen, but I'm going to show y'all this diaper bag. Forget the bubbles on my screen protector thing. You see that diaper bag? First of all, it's an Eddie Bauer diaper bag. I, ca I cause myself this problem all the time. I say, yes, I can do it based off of my past experience. Oh, it's just a regular book bag type diaper bag. Okay, cool. Y'all, look, look, look. You see what that says right there? You see what that says? Let me see. Let me zoom back out. I can't get my... Uh, right here that tab on that book bag says 11 pockets 11 pockets i didn't ask the customer that how many pockets is on it blah 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 blah. i should have said let me look at it first and then i'll let you know whether or not i can do it i didn't do that now granted as you see i was able to go ahead and embroider on it but there this was a pocket here this zipper was a pocket that was a pocket and it kind of like stopped right up. Y'all, it was crazy. Do you know the kind of uh, yoga and Pilates I had to do to get that? Them four little letters on this bag. You have to know what the person is bringing you. Because this type stuff should be a premium. End of discussion. This, this should have cost way more this there was no way this could have been embroidered on a four by four flatbed machine it's just it's, it would have been it it was nearly impossible on the multi-needle machine because of the the extreme lack of room to fit the embroidery arm into that little slot to get that embroidery done i really still don't know how i got it done i ain't gonna lie to you i really don't know how i even did it because i i went blank and prayed and got it done so you have to know what they're bringing so that you can charge accordingly. This is the other diaper bag that they brought. And as you see, it's a nice big old pouch on the front of that diaper bag. Even though, granted, it fooled me. I thought I had plenty of room. But right here, the zipper stopped right here. And on this side, the zipper stopped right there. So I really, it looks like I had all of that space. It looks like I had that entire opening. I didn't. It was more narrow. It was like an inch and a half on either side that I didn't have room to fit a hoop into, a regular hoop. So again, prayer, Pilates, yoga, the whole nine to get this in. Nowhere near as bad as the other diaper bag, but this diaper bag was 
just as tricky okay so again this one I probably wouldn't have if I had known ahead of time I could have quoted less than that one because of how I had to go what all I had to go through to get that on there so that's why I'm saying what item are you bringing you need to know and in some instances I ain't gonna lie to you you need to see it they need to send you a picture, a video, something so that you'll know. Because if I had have known then what I know now about that bag, I wouldn't have done it. Or I would have I would have charged a heck of a lot more than what I charged her. Not even going to tell y'all what I charged because it was embarrassing. But it was a friend. So that's why I went on and did it. But anybody else come to me with something like that, that's a no. I'm not going to do it because that was, it was tedious. It was a lot. So you need to know what they're bringing. Once you determine what they're bringing and whether you can embroider it or not, because there's nothing worse than for you to say, oh, yes, I can embroider that, girl. It's a diaper bag. I can do it with a diaper bag. And then you get it home, and there you're frantically reaching out to folks in embroidery groups or in your area asking, hey, can y'all do this for me? Because I done told this helper I can do it, and now I can't. Okay, so find out what you are bringing. After you find out what you're bringing, then we want to say, okay, well, now that I know what you're bringing, what design are you, what, what am I embroidering? Okay, so once you find out what the person is embroidering, then you can start asking the next logical question. Okay, so if they say, oh, well, it's just my business logo. And I want my business logo. Okay, that's cool. Is is it digitized already? If they don't understand that, what do you mean? Has it been embroidered before? Okay, so asking that question, has it been embroidered before? Has it been digitized already? It's the same question technically. What you're trying to find out is do they already have an embroidery file? Do they already have an embroidery file? Now let's go to the chat because I want to make sure. Please, please bring items to let us see before we quote. Um, exactly. Some things we may not be able to hoop. I almost couldn't hoop that type of bag. I figured it out, but I almost couldn't. Um, let's see. Even with yoga and Pilates, it was it was a stretch. And I'm thankful I had the embroidery grip. Uh, with the clamps that just made everything that's how now I think about it that's how I got it embroidered was with the embroidery clamp um oh Carmen that's a good question how soon do you need it back that's I hate that question but yeah that's that not to mention you don't want to agree just to have them bring an item that's irreplaceable or cost the fortune to replace very good Sheila Cushionberry add a policy stating that some items may not be able to be embroidered as they may not be able to be hooped that is excellent that is excellent. You need to know how soon they want it back, Carmen. I'm assuming that's what you were stating. That would be correct. So once you find out if it's already embroidered, has been embroidered before, then that's when you can say, oh, well, and this is entirely, entirely up to you. All right. Entirely up to you. You can use the file that they have if it's already digitized or if it's already digitized, you can say, I only do my own. I only embroider my own files for myself. It'll have to be digitized again. All right. So that brings us into a whole nother arena. So you already know your minimum is 10 or whatever your minimum is. You already know a thousand per stitch. Okay. But if they've had it digitized already, they can send you the file and you can see how many stitches was in that file and then you can go based off of that. A lot of times that makes it easier. I had a customer send me a file and I was like, look, I don't usually stitch out other people's stuff. And I, excuse me, I told him, look, I'll stitch it, but I have no control over how well it stitches out because I didn't have it digitized. So if it was digitized wrong and it stitches out like trash, that's I, ain't nothing I can do about it. Fortunately, that design was flawless. Oh, and it stitched out so pretty. I was so proud. 
It looks so good. I didn't have it digitized, but I did use their file. So sometimes some folks do come at you with some good stuff. All right. And I was able to price it according to how many stitches was in it because they sent the file and I was able to see it. Um, so if they don't have it digitized already, well, then you have to add in a digitizing fee. Here is the other aspect, the other level <laughs> on digitizing. Do you digitize yourself or do you hire someone to digitize? If you digitize yourself, then you're responsible for how it stitches out because a good, a well, well digitized design will stitch beautifully. For the most part, you shouldn't have any, as long as it's hooped properly, your thread is good, your tension is good, your bobbin thread is good, your needle is good, it should stitch beautifully. Okay, so if it's digitized properly, that's that's you. So you have to get it digitized. So whether you digitize it yourself or whether you have someone digitize, you need to charge a digitizing fee. What people are like, oh, what's digitizing? I don't know. Okay, it's an artwork setup fee. So we do have an artwork setup fee. Sometimes you can just say that instead of digitizing because some people don't really understand. Well, it's already digital. No, you're talking about an image in a file. That's not digitizing. So you can just say it's an artwork setup fee. We have to change it into embroidery stitches. Okay. So has it been embroidered before? Is it digitized already? Those are your questions so that you'll know whether or not to add to your charge that's already there, your minimum of $10, thousand, a dollar per thousand stitches. Woo, y'all. Okay. Then my next question, if they're not bringing an item, and this one, I don't know if it's the worst part of it or no. I, I'm not sure. Because if they're not bringing an item, then you have to find out what do you want this embroidered on. What is your embroidery blank, basically? Okay. And I know it's getting over where you can't really see it on the screen. But what what is this going to be embroidered on? So do I need to buy the t-shirts? Do I need to buy the hoodies? Do I need to buy the hats? Do I need to do I need to do I need to? So by finding that out and knowing that you're going to have to get whatever the item is. Now, don't get it twisted. That's my favorite. I appreciate buying the item myself because if I do mess up and need to replace it, I know where I got it from and usually know that I can get another one. When a customer brings something, in a lot of instances, how are you going to replace it? Because they probably got it on sale or clearance or something like that. And you, how are you going to find Or they had it for a while and now they want to put embroidery on it. And you ain't ever going to find another one ever on this planet unless you go on eBay. And now all of a sudden it's $5,000 because it's that rare. So you have to, I think, getting the item yourself is the best way to handle doing embroidery for business. Because you are in better control of your pricing and your availability. But it involves research. It involves research. You have to find, okay, so if it's a hat, is it the trucker hat with the mesh on the back? Is it a dad cap with the curved brim and a low profile? Is it the tall foam on the front hat? Is it five panel hat? Is it the flat brim? You have all these questions and stuff that you got to go through the customer. Also showing you where your pricing strategy needs to come in. This is like research and development fees that need to go in there. So that's why some folks will charge a consultation before they even take the job. All right. Or you can do like these folks where they have a 45 minimum, $45 minimum charge and they kind of like add that into what they got going on with it. If someone brings in a file to use and you stitch it out first, check to make sure to charge them for stitching it out. That isn't done for free. If it's already digitized, would you have to know the format? Andrea, if you have Sew Up Pro, you don't have to already know the format because Sew Up Pro takes all formats. Editing fees, if it needs it. Oh my gosh, Miss Bickham, I didn't even think of that. At this exact moment, I didn't think of that. Because some folks want you to resize. I don't resize. I will not resize the file. I'll let them know off gate. Whatever size you bring me, if you want it bigger, if you want it larger, you have to pay for it to be digitized at the size that you want. I'm not going to resize it. That's my personal take on that. 
okay when I ordered the item for them let them know that it could affect the turnaround time that is correct so now now that's what I tell my customers I have to have it shipped to me so I need you to allow me time to have it delivered to me I don't go I don't I choose not to have folks dropping off and picking up blah blah none of that anymore none of that so yes all of that is involved in your pricing strategy okay so you gotta go out and do the research you gotta find the item that they want to have this embroidered on you gotta figure out what route you're gonna take and how you're going to take it okay so what do you want this embroidered on what's our next question so now we know what they want we know they have a hat we know we have to get it digitized we know uh, what the we've already told them to turn around time we they've met our minimum now we're at the point of how do we quote them on something that we may not have the stitch count on yet how do you quote them when you may not have that total stitch count yet okay I will tell you one trick one trick that I've used in the past okay there is so what pro I've told you guys about so what pro so what pro is a embroidery design editing program so you use so what pro to edit embroidery designs that are already there okay you don't have to worry about um you you don't digitize with so what pro that's what i'm trying to say when you're wanting to digitize you would need to use so art okay so art is 75 dollars for that program so if you already have it you're ahead of the curve if you don't have it um then i if you're going to be pricing and this is something you plan on doing i'm going to show you a trick you can use with that program so so art is like the most affordable embroidery digitizing program out there all the others are hundreds if not thousands of dollars so when you use so art it's an auto digitizer so you put the picture into the program upload the picture into the program jpeg whatever and then you have the program automatically digitize it for you whether it's the best quality digitizing or not at this point maybe not necessarily because you do have to tweak some stuff with that program for it to be a really good output of a design to stitch out but just for pricing strategy only just for pricing this isn't for a stitch out this isn't you need to know a general idea of about how many stitches a design is going to be put it in that program let it auto digitize it takes maybe five ten minutes and once it auto digitizes, it'll give you a good idea of how many stitches is going to be in that design. Ask them what size do you want this design to be first. Of course, that's actually that needs to be. That's the next. What size will the final design be? That's another question. What's the final size design? So you get that size. And if they say, oh, it's five by six. Okay. Digit set that picture in so art at five by six tell it auto digitize and it'll it'll automatically digitize all these stitches usually usually it will digitize with a lot of underlayment stitches and the regular fill stitches and it will digitize with more stitches than was necessary so i use that in the past as a guide to say okay it looks like your design may come in at about 26,000 stitches so that means and I'm this is me talking you know to myself you can tell the customer well it looks like your design might be about $26 to stitch each let me send it to the digitizer and get a final price for you but it should be about $26 it may be less now they love hearing the fact that it may be less so once you get it back from the digitizer usually my stitch count is way an overshot he can get it down lower and they're more happy with the price because it ain't $26 now it's 20 and oh it's gonna be $20 to stitch this out there you go so 
you want to find out what your stitching cost is going to be. And in my opinion, let a customer know that the cost of stitching out that specific design is going to be X. The reason why I say that is because I've had customers say, oh, well, you stitched it on this hat and you only charged me $8 for the hat. Okay, but now we're doing a set of polo shirts. So it should be more or it should be less. You see what I'm saying? Because now you're dealing with a completely different item that you're embroidering this on. So the price is most likely not going to be the same. A hat is harder to hoop. So I gave you the wrong comparison, but the hat is harder to hoop, so it should be more expensive than doing on polo shirts. Because polo shirts are pretty simple. You put it, put the thing, line it up, boom, you're gone. But hats, you got to kind of hold your mouth right. And if you don't have a multi-needle machine where you can easily use a cap driver, if you have to do it on your single needle, it's a lot more work. So again, you have to price also based on the difficulty of what you're doing. Okay. When I get a logo digitized for a customer, I always add charges to the actual digitizing cost to cover my time and materials to test the editing, etc. Alyssa, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Laverne, I order and research all by blanks. It's easier for me. Stacy H, I'm a newbie. What's a reliable digitizing service? There's quite a few out there. Um... I'll point, put that one down in the chat, JJ Digitizing. That is one that I've used quite frequently. I think there's another one, SNS something or other. Um, not 100% sure. Hey, Diane Parker. Welcome back. Thank you, Miss Beckham, for doing that for me. I appreciate it. I tell the customer I will get an exact quote from my digitizer. Then I add my charge for testing it, editing it, etc. and tell my customer that price. And Alyssa, that's excellent. My concern for folks is those that have those customers who love to say, I need to know right away. I need to know now. I need to blah, 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 blah. You know, we all have those customers that needed this thing embroidered yesterday. Okay. So what item are they bringing? If you're bringing the item, then now we can move to what am I embroidering? If they don't have the item, then what do you want this embroidered on? So if they are already bringing you something, do you charge a risk fee or do you let them know or let them know, hey, this is your item. Damages happen. Embroidery, I cannot be held responsible for damages to items that you brought. There's one other experienced embroiderer business owner here in this group here tonight. I pulled up her price list. Even she says, I do not embroider on items brought by customers. Why? Because of the very reasons of what I stated earlier. You assume a risk. You assume a risk unless you reject that risk and let them know it could be damaged. Because our embroidery machines, let's face it, can be quite temperamental and they can act real ugly. And it can put a hole in something really quickly. All right. So. It's up to you how you want to take that risk. But all of that need to be factored into your pricing, your pricing strategy. So just because I'm saying a minimum $10 and a dollar per thousand, hats need to be more because hats are more of a hassle. Bags need to be more because bags are more of a hassle. Um, the larger the design is, of course, the more stitches. So you're automatically going to have uh, a higher price on that. But specialty items, tote bags, all of that stuff, anything other than just your plain old flats on onesies, the onesies need to command a higher price. Even though if you're doing applique, so now you're going to have less stitches because it's applique, but you're doing applique. You're having to cut out fabric in that shape before you stitch it down. So don't quickly discount your price just because you're doing applique because now you're doing even more work instead of the machine doing the work, the stitching. You're having to cut this out. You're having to make sure it has a uh, heat and bond on the back if that's the way you choose to do it. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? And don't let it be a multi uh, applique type design. Oh my God, you'll be there for forever trying to get all them darn pieces of fabric on there. But, but it could prove to be um, financially viable because now 
you're doing more work you can add to your price you see what i'm don't let people tell you you're charging too much all right so you know what they're bringing you know what you're embroidering on now what is what are we embroidering how many colors is it is this a, a 15,000 stitch count design but i'm having to do 20 different colors what if it's it's a name and it's got a color each thing and you have a single needle so you got to keep changing the thread or you have to order the thread you see what i'm saying there's all of these are factors that you want to keep in mind has it been embroidered before okay well are you going to use the person's design or are you going to have them have it digitized all over again if it's been embroidered before are you, are we stitching this out at the same size it was done for you before or will this need to be resized because it has to because if it has to be resized it's going to have to be digitized again i can't shrink it blow it up it don't now if you want to do it that way you can i choose not to only because i know the quality of digitizing can be compromised if you resize even if you resize it through um an editing program okay um so again here are the questions that you definitely want to keep in mind so when we're telling you to price something your base price of a dollar per thousand or a dollar 25 per thousand and your um, minimum charge of no less than ten dollars uh, in order you may have to adjust that higher or lower based on the answers to these questions these are really really important questions do you those of you who are doing embroidery for a business and has done embroidery for a business, what other questions would you want to ask in the beginning before quoting a price? Uh, Sheila Cushenberry says, make sure to notify customers that any changes to the design after approval. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. We'll add the cost and time. Many will try to add on and expect saying, no, ma'am. That's why I get approval up front. Now, that's one thing I do do and have done this is the design this is what we're doing do you approve this or not so when i stitch this out and you're like oh wait i know mm -mm, mm -mm. no sorry that's that's extra ma'am because you approved it and i have it in writing i do a lot of texting y'all because that texting i swear that texting just it tears them up every time because word of mouth hearing it over the phone they'll swell up now and they told you abc xyz no text me exactly what you're wanting I'll send you a picture. This is what you wanted. Yes or no. Yes. All right, cool. I'm going on with it. I love texting. I'm, I, I'll text in a hot minute. Matter of fact, I've even turned off my phone. My phone, my business line no longer accepts calls. So they don't like that, but I'm sorry. You need to text me so that we can have a... a proof in writing and I'll know if I want to even be bothered with this order or not. Unfortunately, that's the part I'm at right now in <laughs> life. Stampin' Sue Creates right now. I'm creating projects made to sell at craft shows. Example, dog bandanas, embroidered mug rugs. How would these items be priced? Okay, cool. This is an excellent um, question as well, Stampin' Sue Creates. I appreciate you asking that one. So our first set of questions was based on customers come into you okay so i'm gonna put that up here um i'm gonna put that up here and put customers coming to you and i actually don't like the way i put that in there so let's back this up and we're going to put a space right there all right so now we're going to go to um say flea markets markets or shows okay so now you have total control of your pricing strategy now when you are creating items in bulk so to speak to take with you now stamp and sue creates let me ask you this question really quick um, when you're talking about creating projects made to sell, are you going to customize on site or are you having it already customized before you get there? 
the reason now mug rugs i can understand that those, those are done beforehand but and actually before she even answers that question i'll let you know if you are customizing on site on demand the one dollar per thousand and the minimum ten dollars does not apply the reason why i say that is when you have a customer coming to you as i as i put right here right there customers coming to you that's different okay you have time you have a turnaround time you can say hey you know i'll get this done blah 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 but if you're at a show and you're doing on demand your price needs to be more because you are performing an on-demand service right then right there okay now you can take a chance and leave it at a minimum and then put a tip jar and say tips are appreciated and they can tip you but you should have a minimum right there per design so like for instance say you go into dog shows and there's a big dog competition dog show competition coming to town and you were able to get a spot and you have a, a tent set up where you can sell your stuff and you got some really cute doggy bandanas and some really cute leashes and some really cute collars and you can put the dog's name on all of that right there on the spot with your trusty rusty embroidery equipment that's awesome sauce so the price of the collar and then you have a set price for embroidering up to a certain amount of letters because if you get a dog whose name is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious that dog you know has going to have to his his name's going to have to be shortened to super instead of supercalifragilistic he's got to be super but you have a set amount of letters that you can do within your given space on your embroidery machine okay so you want to have a minimum amount of letters you want to have a minimum amount of choices of embroidery fonts and the only reason I'm y'all I'm about to go through this because in less than a month I have to I've committed and I know my husband is back there listening and he probably gonna be like what <laughs> he gonna kill me dead but I've committed to a, a on-site show I'm not gonna be embroidering on site but I take orders on site so they're gonna have to be offered a minimum because you don't want to be losing your mind trying to offer people things that are off the charts and they're like oh no but i like this font over here now you got to find that stupid font oh that's the worst so no you offer no i only do these four fonts the, this is how many letters you get and the price to put his name on the collar is ten dollars and the cost of the collar is eight dollars so that's going to be eighteen dollars for that if you only want his initials it's ten dollars to put his initials and the collar is going to be eight dollars so it's going to be eighteen dollars to put his initials or his name up to ten letters whatever the case you need a minimum per item for what you're going to do and you need to come up with that price but you're doing an on-demand service so it really should be more you should be charging more for that okay so even still going back to her question if she is doing on demand the price should be more but if she's not doing on demand if she's creating her own creations and she's doing her own designs well in this instance you kind of have to price within yourself and what you want to do you can still do the dollar per thousand you really can but you're also up against the challenge of like for instance your mug rugs your mug rugs involve a lot more intricate work, so to speak. So you're, or let's go to hand sanitizers. I know a lot of people sell the little hand sanitizer keychains for, I don't know, and I don't have my purse out here to show you my hand sanitizer keychain, but, um, you know, they sell those with the leather that they use and all that other jazz for $8 a hand sanitizer, sometimes $5 a hand sanitizer. So pricing things like that, you want to look at the materials involved, whether you're buying vinyl or you uh, where you're buying your vinyl from, how much it is, all that. Um, your bandanas for the doggies, the leashes for the doggies, the collars for the doggies. If you're already putting like good boy on each collar, you know, you need to price that for yourself and determine if you're going to do the thousand dollar per thousand or like the hand sanitizer holders don't use that many stitches but you're still creating something 
that's a novelty and it's custom. So you would want to price that accordingly. That That's a difficult question when it comes to the projects, the items that you're actually making in the hoop items is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so I would say, look at your time. Look at the time that's involved. Look at the materials that's involved. If you're using glitter vinyl, glitter vinyl can be pricey. So get your sheet of glitter vinyl, whatever size your sheet is. Count how many hand sanitizers you can get out of it. So that $8 sheet of vinyl, if you can get five out of it, well, you definitely need to divide your eight by five or however that math goes <laughs> and figure out how much in materials that you're using and add that into your price. The time to put that stuff together, you got snaps that you got to put on that stuff. You got um, uh, keychain links to put on that stuff. And if you're one of those folks that like to go ahead and put the sanitizer in there, charge for that too so it depends a lot on what you're going to sell and how you're going to price those and you also have to consider your market but again don't let them come and tell you that your prices are too high see that's the downside to being at a show because a lot of times well it depends on the type show you're going to if it's a doggy show where the dog competition came to town and you were able to get a tent and you're going to sell okay well those people expect to pay a premium because they're at an event they're at a dog show or whatever but if you're at a trade show or a flea market that consumer base is coming there to look for a bargain trade shows are bad for that trade shows they really want a bargain they don't want to pay full price for something designer so if it's an event that's a little your pricing strategy will be a little bit different than a bargain event okay eve mar hello welcome thank you for being a youtube hoop group member i don't think i said hi and shonda smalls welcome thank you for being a youtube hoop group member as well felicia storm says we like we nurses say if it wasn't documented it was not done exactly exactly already made no customizing okay so you have to base that how long did it take you to make um, let me grab one of these because I absolutely loved making these little purse. Whoops! And then I just dropped it. Ugh. I loved making these little purse thingies in the hoop purse thingies. These took hardly any time whatsoever to throw together. These were just the cutest little purse designs. And this one, I ended up putting poopy bags in it from Amazon. Some generic poopy bags. And this could be clipped to a leash, a doggy leash, and then they'll have their, you know, poopy bags or whatever. They were so simple to put together, but I got to buy lobster class. I have to get rivets. I had to get snaps, you know what I'm saying? And then something possibly if you choose to sell it that way, you got to get something to put in it. Um, this one was two layers no no it wasn't it was one layer yeah no this was one layer so this is only one layer of fabric but you uh vinyl but you have to uh figure out what um cost i mean how much material you're using and price it accordingly okay you're welcome stamp and sue so flea markets and shows eh, the price depends shows events Events, you can charge more. Uh, flea markets. Expect. Uh, bargain. Okay. So events, they expect a premium. Flea markets, they expect a bargain. So you want to definitely keep that in mind as you're pricing there. Okay. Okay. Off topic, Ebony says, when you're a home business, what address did you use? Should I get a P.O. box? I get a P.O. box. A lot of that depends on if you want customers coming to your home or not to drop off orders, to pick up orders. If you don't want to be driving all over town dropping off orders, then you may want to give them your home business address so that you can um, have them come and pick up and drop off or whatever. But otherwise... Uh, if you're going to be shipping everything and receiving all of your stuff by shipment, then a P.O. box is sufficient. 
I had both at one point. Now it's a uh, uh, P.O. box. Now it's P.O. box. I don't want customers coming here at all. Thank you, the true too much. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Ebony. So we have, ooh, that's not bad. 1025, we're doing good. So customers coming to you, your pricing straight. Oh, that's what else I meant to put down here. So minimum should, whoop, should be no less than 10 per order. And dollar is a dollar per thousand stitches. Okay, so your minimum order shouldn't be less than ten dollars an order and a dollar per thousand stitches. Okay, so again, that it, that means your smaller single home needle embroidery machine. You're making a uh, dollar per two minutes. For every two minutes that you're stitching, you're making a dollar. Um, for the larger machines, if you have them crunk up to a thousand stitches a minute, then you're making roughly a dollar a minute. Roughly. I mean, of course, that changes with the design you're stitching, the time it takes to change thread color. Oh, gosh, y'all bobbins. We forgot about bobbins in that other list. You got to pay for bobbins, all that jazz. So that's why we're saying. Um, you should have a minimum. Your prices are not too high and you can make money off of this. It's just a matter of if a person wants something customized bad enough, they will pay for it. Um, where did it go? Heather, this design, the embroidery designs is at badbobbin.com. Badbobbin.com. And I'll put the link here. For the mini purse. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Can you click that or not? Okay. Hopefully you can click one of those. I will never have customers come to the home again as they do not respect your personal time and show up unannounced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will. Yes, they will, girl. Yes, they will. So let's go and I'm going to show you an example since we covered all of that. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples of embroidery pricing. Uh, so like I mentioned, this is in a somewhat well-to-do side of town in the larger Charlotte metropolitan area um, of this specific company. Um, they have a flat rate, any quantity. Logos up to 7,000 stitches are $2.50 per uh, logo. Up to 7,000 stitches, they'll do $2.50. So looking at that, they're kind of under a thousand, a dollar per thousand. They're less in this instance. Logos up to 10,000 stitches, they'll do for three, $3. Logos up to 15,000 stitches, they'll do $4.50. Logos up to 20,000 stitches, they'll do for $6. Okay, and this is a flat rate, any quantity. This is just for example purposes to show you how a brick and mortar has priced theirs. Um, they say over 250 pieces or above 25,000 stitches, you got to email them or call them for a quote. Okay. If a customer supplied logo, it requires a sew out. Someone mentioned that. That if they get it digitized and we want to see what it looks like stitched out first before we stitch it on something, that's called a sew out. That's $15. So they charge extra for that. That's not including digitizing. This is a separate charge. So they're not going to stitch you out an example for free. Okay. Um, turnaround. Their turnaround time is five days from the sew out approval. Okay. So they may require that you get a sew out. I don't know. But once you, you approve the design, then it's five days. They don't say business days. They say five days. And again, as I mentioned, they have a $45 minimum invoice. Okay. Now, um, 
this side right here is for screen print, but this is what I was looking for over here. Um, digitizing for their charge is $40, and they include a sew out for their digitizing. So you get digitizing, but it's $40. Embroidery personalization is $3.75. Not sure what that entails. Like, is that $375 on top of the $250 because it's personalized? I don't know. It doesn't say. But they add for personalization $3.75. Okay. And they split the shipment with you. So they do $5 for the shipment fee. That's just one example. Just one example of some embroidery. Um, some embroidery pricing and now I'm going to pull up another that I was just looking at and that's where I need to go sorry so so far does the pricing make sense to you guys does the because you have to me instead of just coming to you and saying oh you should be charging a dollar per thousand and you should charge minimum ten dollars that's okay that's a starting point and that's kind of helpful but you really need to understand your basis your basics so that you can make an informed decision for your own business because just because I charge a dollar per thousand doesn't mean that's gonna work for you in your area you may need to charge less you may need to charge more the thing is, why are we charging that much? If you have just that small embroidery machine that's a four by four, you can afford to charge less. If you're embroidering out of your home, you can. Do you have to? No, you don't have to charge less, but you can. And if you so choose to do so, that's, that's your choice. And it, it's an, whatever works for you, but you want to make sure you're making a profit. So you want to take all of these other factors into account, your electricity, your time, your bobbins, your, your supplies, your uh, stabilizer, your needles, your thread. What kind of thread are you using? Because metallic thread is way more expensive than regular embroidery thread. So you have to keep that in mind. Are you embroidering on hats? Are you embroidering on bags? All of this needs to make sense to you when you are pricing your stuff. People take advantage of your you and your time when having a home business. I would do a P.O. box, especially in today's world. I would say especially dealing with COVID because you don't want Jeremy folks coming to your house. And if stuff can come to your house, you can lice all it down and let it sit for a few hours before you actually, you know, like really handle it. <laughs> Daniel says, how much would you charge for embroidered masks? Do you think a dollar per thousand stitch is that a good average price still? My question, Daniel, are you talking about embroidering on an existing face mask or are you talking about creating an embroidered face mask like what I do? My face masks are, oh God, my face masks are embroidered. This is regular fabric, but it's like applique, basically, oh, applique face mask, okay? But it is embroidered, okay? So what are you talking about? Creating a face mask or buying a face mask from the store and putting embroidery on it. Instead of having them come to your home, tell them you'll be in someplace area this afternoon and I can meet you there. I have, have done that. Because that particular person, darn show wasn't coming to my house. Okay. All right. Holler. Oh my gosh, we forgot one other part. So when it comes to pricing, creating the face mask and having an embroidered patch on it as well. Okay, see, that's a lot. Um, if you're going to be making the face mask, you can set a set price like I've done. I have a set price for my mask and we'll just say, for instance, my mask's with no customization on it and just fabric and just putting it together we'll say plus the elastic and five bucks maybe this, this is for instance so if this is five dollars to add embroidery to it because they want theirs to say i love this person then you need to charge extra for 
your base price and then add for whatever extra embroidery that you're doing on your mask and of course that's a up to you decision because what you're saying a patch so you have to take into patches take a lot of stitches so whatever your base price is for your so say for instance your patches are 20 bucks then this needs to be 5 plus 20 or if your masks are $10 10 plus 20 so it's entirely up to you how much time and effort is invested in making these masks and how much is your elastic um, and the time to put it together how would you add custom embroidery on your existing mask on the hoop and not have the stitches go through all the different layers of fabric? Um, I've done it where I've embroidered on the top fabric first and then added the other two layers to put the mask together afterwards. But usually I just ended up embroidering through all three layers. The people didn't care. At any point, does supplies get factored into needles and maintenance? Yes. At all times, the true too much. And for that, I'm going to make a suggestion that my CFO suggested. And that's where you want to keep up with your supplies, the cost of your supplies over a set period of time. And see what you're spending versus what money you're bringing in. Now, in most instances, your profit will well succeed or well go over how much money you're spending out in maintenance usually unless like one of these type machines go down and you got to replace a motherboard or something like that and then you might break even um but for the most part your regular basic maintenance your regular supplies your regular stabilizer if you price your embroidery accordingly and as i mentioned usually that dollar per thousand stitch um, plus any extra for specialty items will more than cover your expenditures in supplies usually usually educational costs and learning tools it took you just pay for a so what pro class for instance <laughs> i love that um yes definitely i mean you have to okay so this is the other part to it this is the this is a whole nother part to it and i definitely need to bring this up as well i don't know if you saw my previous question but when you say ten dollars in order do you mean ten dollars a shirt no when i say ten dollars per order i mean a customer is coming to you one customer is coming to you and saying i need this embroidery job done that customer should not have an order for less than ten dollars so if they're coming to you with two shirts and it's got 10 stitches on it. I don't care. It's going to be $10. If they come to you and that shirt has 20,000 stitches on it per shirt. So now you're looking at a total of 40,000 stitches. So a dollar per thousand means that it's going to be $40 for that order. You've gone over your $10 minimum. So you don't have to worry about charging the $10. It's when they're trying to come at you with this little itty bitty bit of stuff and they're saying well i don't think i should pay ten dollars for that well guess what that's my price that's my minimum i don't do anything for less than that um educational costs okay so going back to miss social dev i i we're going over all of these prices and we're we're talking about all these different price stat strategies like i have a, a whole nother list of prices and possibly discounts rush orders if somebody is like okay well i know your turnaround time is five days but i need this done tomorrow that's a rush order fee off gate what is your rush order charge you need to let them know because the customers will do that to you every time so help me i'll understand when I'm telling you it's going to be five days, it's five days. But I'm one of them that's like, well, I'll see what I can do. And don't charge them the rush fee. I'm bad about that. Please, y'all, don't start that. Go ahead. Start that now. I have a rush fee. If you need it in less than five business days, it's going to be an extra $50. It's going to be an extra $25. It's going to be an extra $75. Whatever your minimum rush charge is, set it and forget it and stick to it don't change that please charge a rush fee y'all please please charge a rush fee i did not do that 
and I would be under the gun and stressed out and all upset and frustrated and blah, 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 blah. And they got me going through all this, jumping through all these hoops, trying to hurry up and get this crap done. And I ain't getting paid or compensated for that. That'll be a no. Charge a rush fee. So all of this stuff, you know, you definitely want to keep in mind. But if you are just getting started, if you are just getting started, please focus on me now. Listen to me now. Please. I mean, just eyeball to eyeball. We really need to have a heart to heart truth moment. All of it is truth. I don't lie about anything. But please listen to me. If you're just getting started, I am at year, I, I was looking at the pictures the other day, starting my business. I'm at year four now, I want to say four or five. I am just within the last 12 months, just starting to see a true profit from my business. I mean, a significant profit. I'm not talking about, you know, extra $10 here, extra 10 I'm talking about like, oh, wow, I'm actually making money now. This is crazy. You will, it's going to take time unless, unless, for instance, if you had just got started at the beginning of the year, this was your first time with embroidery and all this jazz, and you started doing face masks and you're making money that way, you see what I'm saying? You have to, it's going to take time. It is going to take time. You are not becoming, going to become a millionaire. And I have a video out there. It's one of my highest watch videos on the top 10 mistakes new embroiderers make. And that's one of them. That's one of the mistakes. Thinking that you're going to get rich off of this just because you just got a, an embroidery machine and I'm about to make money. I'm going to retire next week. Watch me. It's not going to work like that. Please understand. It's going to take time. You have to build a business. So in the beginning, the reason why I'm saying this is because Ms. Social Deb brought out a really, really good point. She said, what about the educational costs and learning tools that it took to learn how to do this? She paid for classes. So some of you are just starting. You're going to end up spending more in the beginning in getting started building your business. And in all honesty, that's every business that you come across. It's very rare that you're going to start a business and be making profit day one. Very rare. I mean, like true profit. You're going to make money, but your money usually is going to go back and pay for something that you had to do to get the business started, whether it's buying a business license, whether that's paying for a logo to be made for your business, whether that's registering as an LLC, whether that's paying your first down payment on your location of where you're going to be working out of or whether that's buying an embroidery machine to begin with you're going to be upside down in your first i dare say two years of business it's going that's just how this works it's how it works that's why even the government allows a new business they understand there's going to be loss in the first two to three years of business. They totally get that. They expect when you file your taxes, it's going to be a loss. That's just because that's every business. Now, if you don't, great. That is totally awesome. But keep in mind, the more you invest in your business, in most instances, most instances, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. Okay. So if you're paying for classes, I mean, you can add this pricing strategy in, but the problem is you kind of need to um, understand that you're building up a business as well. So you, as long as you're getting orders coming in on a semi-regular basis, then you can help balance all of that out. That's why when I suggest a person that's getting into doing embroidery and want to make money off of it, that you have a job. Uh, on the side that's paying your bills let you have something you may be sick and tired of that job i'm about ready to walk out i need to do something for myself i get that baby i totally do but please understand your end justifies the mean means so put up with it because you know at the end of that storm there's going to come that rainbow and you'll be making money for yourself but you got to go through the storm first. You got to let that job pay your bills. Don't jump out of it 
right now. Let it pay your bills. Now, if you lost your job, that's something totally different. And I totally get it. You got to hustle. You got to do something to make this money. Get it. I totally get it. And we're here to help with that. But if you have a job, don't just walk away from it because you think you're going to make money off embroidery. You are, but it's not going to come like you expect it to. Okay? Please understand that. Please. Just please. I, I really need y'all to understand that. Okay? Quilting for the Soul says it'll take four years to learn. I mean, yeah, it will. Some people can learn a little bit faster, but you you have to expect you i mean where are your customers going to come from ask yourself that question you have all these prices and i'm giving you all this pricing strategy where are your customers going to come from okay like uh stamp and sue creates she's going to shows and she's going to be selling her stuff at shows i did not have success at shows i did not because i would make things that i thought would sell that i thought people would want but where I was, they didn't want that stuff. They didn't want it. So if you're going to, say, for instance, the doggy show is in town, they're having a doggy contest, and you're able to get a spot, that's different because you have a niche. You know what these people are there for. They're there for doggy stuff. You make your doggy stuff, you're going to make money because you know what. But if you're going to like a generic show or flea market and you you haven't taken the time to study your audience and know what people want or know what's hot right now on the market you're not going to make money you're going to make a bunch of inventory and sit on it and you're you're going to be frustrated and be like oh she said i was going to make money off of this embroidery mm, yeah but there, you got to put the work in on it too okay you got to put the work in on it you have to study your market you have to study what's hot you have to look at what people want out there and then use that to make your money. Don't make a whole bunch of inventory of something and it not sell. Don't do that to yourself. Uh, what am I using on the inside of your mask? I never made them. And if I'm asked, I would like to know what to get. Um, eh, that depends. Some people use just an extra piece of fabric. So it, like uh, this is cotton. Um, so cotton on the front, cotton on the back, and another sheet of cotton fabric in the middle. So it's three layers. I do use three layers. Um, another tip I've heard people use cutaway stabilizer, the, uh, uh, mesh stabilizer in the middle that can work as well. It's just entirely what you choose to do. Hey, Miss D purple one. How are you? Um, uh, Margo, thank you very much. And someone, hi, Angelia Baker. Welcome. Christian says, I have a problem with my machine. It says the needle is down. Press the needle position button to raise the needle, but it doesn't do anything. It's like stuck then it sounds like your bobbin down in your bobbin area, your thread is jammed down in your bobbin area. Um, because usually, especially because if you can't turn that hand wheel, which don't force it to turn, if you can't turn it generally like you normally can, then there's something going on. So take the hoop off, look down in your bobbin area and see what's jamming that up and why it's not moving around, Christian. We invested in educational tools and time to learn this and should be respected in our prices. That is absolutely correct. I took a part-time job at a commercial embroidery place and learned a lot that way before I started my business. That was an excellent idea. Excellent idea. Thank you, Ms. Bickham. Uh, just started two months ago. Thanks to your inspiring video, I got an embroidery machine. Awesome, the true too much. Ah! That's what's up. I'm still consider myself a beginner in learning how to embroider. And it takes time. But the cool thing is, if you learn something really good, uh, like, oh, Miss Bickham says you can put all of your educational items on your taxes. Anytime you shop for supplies, meet with a customer, etc., keep track of your mileage and write that off. Excellent, excellent advice. Excellent. So we have roughly 10 minutes. For those of you in here who are experienced business owners, um, I want to definitely reach out and thank Miss American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics for her pricing information. I didn't really get to get into it as much as I wanted to, but it did jar my memory on some things to remember to point out. So I definitely appreciate that. Those of you who are uh, embroiderer business owners and have been for quite some time, 
if you have any pricing strategy tips you would like to uh, impart to the rest of the Hoop group, please feel free to put that in the chat now in the last 10, nine minutes that we have to be on this show because pricing can be intimidating. It can be intimidating. Um, so for those of you who are starting out, so, so creative, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And hi, Lorraine Thomas. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, for those of you, um, and thank you, Dolores. I'm glad it was quite helpful. And hey, Nora22000, how are you? Uh, so for those of you, oh, Melody Wilcox, welcome, my dear. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. <laughs> so for those of you who are, Melody, I know it's, it actually, I got your email and I have your label. So it's going out. I ran out of envelopes, so to speak. I know, so to speak, I ran out of envelopes and just went and got some more today. So we'll be getting those out. Um, the true too much. So true. I was expecting parades. Purchased 152 shirts for threads, needles, and COVID and canceled all parades. So just waiting. Trying to tell you that's that's the thing with inventory and getting inventory. It's quite stressful. But for those of you who are are experienced, post in the chat what you would definitely thank you, Melody. I appreciate that. Um, for those of you who are experienced, give me a pricing strategy that you think we didn't cover, uh, so that we can make sure that every all bases are covered. And you guys, whoop, over here, jot this information down customers coming to you so that you'll have those questions handy so that you don't overlook something when it's time to price your order okay thank you prototype I appreciate that so you know pricing is intimidating as I started to say pricing is very intimidating um, and looking a customer in the eye and saying yes this is how much this is going to cost and then holding your breath and waiting on them to say yes or no can be frustrating when they say, well, man, I don't know. I'll let you know. I'll get back with you. Don't worry about that. That's just one hurdle. You have many other customers that will come and many other customers that will go. Keep in mind, as long as you're true to yourself, stick to your pricing strategy. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Don't think that, oh, well, I paid 300 for this, so she don't have to pay me $20 just to put these two initials on this one little piece of fabric don't overprice it either don't go crazy don't get crazy now okay just you know it's it's don't price to get rich price to make a profit price to make a profit because what happens is when you price to make a profit not to get rich but when you price to make a profit that will encourage your customer hey her price ain't too bad you know what I remember this girl, she did this and she'll refer to others and then she'll refer to others and they'll refer to others and you'll get that repeat business built up and then you will end up having more work than you can handle. You will end up having more work than you can handle because you were honest in your business practices. You priced it in such a way so as to encourage your repeat customers and make a profit at the same time, okay? Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. And before we log out, I want to remind each and every one of you, if the thread is jammed, I have to use a long sharp knife to cut the threads. I can release the hoop from the machine. It only cuts the threads. And this is what I use for that. Dollar Tree. Get your Dollar Tree craft knife. Stick it all the way out. Slide it under that hoop. It's super thin, so it goes under that hoop. Lay it as flat to the machine as you can and slice just like bread. And hopefully it won't cut your project. But it could. But for the most part, try and cut only the threads. All right. Um, you're welcome, Larice. Oh, yeah, price breaks. Okay, so here's some other tips. You can offer price breaks for larger orders of the same kind. My price breaks is 12 pieces, 10% off, 24 pieces, 15% off, 48 pieces, 20% off. So that's good. That's good. Alyssa, I charge $10 minimum up to 5,000 stitches and up to four colors. Every thousand stitches after that, I add a dollar. And every color after four, I add a dollar. You're welcome, Felicia. So I appreciate those tips. Teresa, non-refundable de deposits. Yas, you can definitely do that, especially if they come to you with a large order and wanting a whole bunch of stuff done. 
okay? People are willing to pay more if you have great quality yas, for sure. Um, American Eagle also said, I have pricing on my website, but I'm not stuck on it. My pricing fluctuates depending on the item. You can also fluctuate the price depending on the irritation or aggravation of a customer. Okay? I'm, I'm not sugarcoating that at all. You get a customer in and they want to change this, change that, move your date up, move your date back. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do this, forgot to do that, blah, blah, blah. You can you can increase your price if they come back and say, yeah, I know it was that this much, but I mean this time, but this time it's going to be a little bit more because, you know, with shipping and COVID and having to do it, yeah, I had to go up on my prices. You have the right to raise your prices at any time. You have that right as your own business owner. Okay. How much do I need to make before I file taxes? EJ's daughter, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. What I'm going to say is check with your tax preparer. Because I'm I'm assuming it's going to be different for each uh, area, I would assume. Because I was told 300, but I don't know how true that is. <laughs> uh, true too much, perhaps one third in the start, one third at the first view. I, for myself, I charge up front. All money is up front. All money's up front. That's my personal choice. You can choose a deposit. You can choose all money up front. And you can choose a third. That is up to each and every one of you guys as well. I spent five years as a small business lender. Write out your pricing strategy after documenting all costs. Nora 2000, I need you to email me. Email me, please. The craft knife tip is the best tip I ever got. Now we use them for everything. Yas, I'm trying to tell y'all that craft, craft knife and, and it's so thin to get down it. Oh, girl. Can't tell you how many times I was up here snotting and crying because I could not get that hoop up off that thing. So, yes, it is awesome. Hey, Sylvia Young, how are you? If you're going to fluctuate your prices, then say starting at or say pricing is subject to change. Thank you very much, afro Colombian. That is an excellent tip. I appreciate that. So, for you guys, um, American Eagle, I have a statement on the website that is subject to change. Awesome. So you guys definitely, definitely take note, watch this again, check the chat again, write these tips down, um, and I'll see about trying to see if we can't get some kind of, uh, what do you call it, uh, chat, something or other, so that you will have some of this in writing. Be sure to put this information down as well. Uh, because this is a subject that I get a lot of questions on. A lot of questions. And pricing is, again, it's intimidating, but it can be done. It is personal now. Just because I charge this much doesn't mean you have to charge the same thing. You can play with it. Um, let your customers know it can be subject to change. Um, and don't let them bully you into lowering your prices. Unless you just can't get no kind of work whatsoever, no matter how much you charge. And even then, I still wouldn't change my prices because this is just, you're doing a specialty thing for people and custom orders just cost more. No matter what business you go to, custom costs more. Sorry, but not sorry. So thank y'all for joining us. It is now 11 p.m. our time. I definitely appreciated you joining us this evening. So if you have any other questions, you can feel free to shoot me an email. I'll try and get to you as soon as possible. It's thebabiesbooty at gmail.com. That is the official email for the baby's booty. Also, if you want to learn So What Pro, we do have open classes. They're going quick, though. They are going quick. So go ahead and sign up for these classes. Um, we also have a YouTube hoop. We have a hoop group on Facebook. So we have Facebook hoop group. We also have a hoop group at thebabiesbooty.com. Feel free to join both and post pictures of what you're working on so that we can uh, enjoy the crafts and encourage each other. Also, there is a hoop group here on YouTube. If you join up, you get a bell. So if you're interested in getting your own purple bell to ring along with us, go ahead and join the YouTube hoop group. That's how you get the bell. You got to join the membership here. There is a monthly charge, but you do get a bell for free. 
I will ship it out to you myself. Each bell is numbered and signed. Each bell is numbered and signed, and it will be sent to you. Uh, just shoot me an email after you join up and say, hey, this is whatever your YouTube name is. This is my mailing address, and we'll get a bell out to you as soon as possible. So thank you so very much for uh, joining us. And as a perfect statement to close this video with, Afro-Colombian, if they can't respect your pricing, they are not your ideal customers or clients. If they can't respect your pricing, they are not your ideal customers or clients. All right. So thank you so very much for joining us this evening. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. And until the next time we see you, <laughs> we hope you have happy, profitable embroidery. You guys have a good night, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week, next Sunday at 9 p.m. Have a good evening. Bye.